Jim and Stacy show. We have the convergence of illegal immigration and then election issues, right? And everybody knows about this generally. Um, but trying to get to the very bottom of exactly what is the problem and why do we have it and how do we solve it? So it's so interesting that um, this year there are like several national groups of legislators and nationally legislators meet all different states multiple times a year, different places. And so one of those groups that's very mainstream group uh, had their conference this summer and one of the sessions was on this exact topic. So it was a pretty, pretty current topic nationally among all, a lot of state legislators are talking about this. But I love the fact uh, they actually talked about real issues, not talking about They had talking points, but they kind of went off and started talking about what happens when, what, why are illegals registered folks, right? They you know why illegals are registered folks and how they get registered folks. And we're all just saying here, like, the registered folks are voting. Something's going on, right? Well, it's not just as usual, a silver bullet, one, uh, one answer thing, but there are a few different ways. So I want to kind of walk through that tonight on how illegals end up getting registered to vote. And then also um, some of the big loopholes that we have that could be solved. Uh, and I have right here, I didn't know which tab in front of me. It's all a bunch of mumbo jumbo. So I ended up putting my bill, um, Senate Bill 108, this last year. This is a brand new bill that I built this year on voter registration. It does not specifically address this particular topic that we're talking about tonight, but um, I have, uh, in the closing months of my term, uh, I'm not doing all requests, but I already promised earlier this year for the very end of the session. Constituents reached out and wanted to do a bill on the illegals voting uh, issue. And so I'm doing a bill on that, writing a bill up for that. I um, already um, have a plan to have that sponsored next year in the Senate. You all know voter voter, motor voters, where the federal requirements came out in the 90s to require you're going to go get your driver's license, and then you also need to be able to register to vote. And it's just, it's just Blossom from there to any touch of any government agency, basically, they all think throw a voter registration card for you. And so, this is this is a big, big uh, category. We're going to talk about how that actually happens. So, first of all, I'm going to take you to the statutes where people, um, citizens or permanent residents, it's all one statute, either citizens or permanent residents can get driver's licenses. That's okay uh, because, you know, you can go through here and you can see Kentucky residential address, physical description, proof of residency, all kinds of things that we actually care about about people who um, want to drive. Now, of course, driving and voting to do things, right? So I'm going to call your attention to this paragraph here. And it says, in addition to the information up above, a permanent resident Okay, if you're not a citizen, you also have to have one of these documents. Okay, so either be I five or one card, or uh, you have these uh, temporary uh, residents. There's also, see, I'm looking through here, asylum is in here somewhere. I don't, I thought I, it used to all be in the same place. But anyway, you get the idea. You don't have to be a citizen to drive. Okay, and it, it makes no sense because we love when we travel. We can just drive other places too, and same thing. People come over here, um, they like, you know, they're from a civilized country, then you know, we recognize, well, they probably know how to drive decent enough to get on roads. This is the, the start that a lot of people wonder, well, then what happens, okay? So think about if you're an illegal person and you come in, you really don't have documentation. Uh, first of all, is the clerk going to really touch you and say, you need have documentation, are they going to try to slice it through? Well, uh, I had a lady who uh, used to do like Spanish outreach ministry at the church, okay? So she had taken the lady to get her ride to get her haircut or something and took her to this uh, clerk's office to back when they had clerks and driver licenses that you could get. Um, to her clerk's office and said, okay, she wanted to get his driver, slot, ID card, why not, right? And so in the process of doing that, this lady's got no documentation, so now she's walking out with an ID card, okay? 
should be flag number one. Um, but then the next question was, would you like to register to vote? Oh, oh, why in the world if a clerk knows this person's not a citizen, why do they ask you if you want to register to vote? Well, this is the wonders of federal law about requiring everybody to make sure everybody has a chance to vote. And so I think it's bad training. I think it's bad interpretation. But just imagine if you're in a training session that says you must ask everybody to vote. And if you don't, you, you know, infringe their constitutional rights. And so then they get scared into we have to make sure we ask literally everybody. Well, uh, I think we can kind of back up and say, let's understand exactly what the situation is. Because this also happens uh, if you are not just if you're getting a driver's license, go to registration agencies. Technically, this is a type of state law again. Um, you all notice the nerds in the room. You all notice all of the chapter numbers up in the top left corner are 116. 116 is road registration chapter in Kentucky law. So if you really want to go down deep and stay down long and come up dry, you can go read chapter 116. <laughs> uh, Voter registration agencies are also in accordance with the NDRA, agencies that provide assistance to disabled people, including medical, Medicaid, like Medicaid and food stamps. Um, so you all are familiar with those types of places. And those are just like your driver's license office as well. They are asking everyone and their mother, would you like to register a vote? Now here's a story. I don't know who told it to me, so apologize if I'm telling you back something that's called um, dementia, and I'm young, and I'm still getting it. <laughs> so okay, they went to one of these uh, assistance places, and they reported, you know, they gave them the car, and they said, um, okay, so they're trying to fill out the car, so let me show you, there's a new car. Uh, this is not a federal car, this is a Kentucky car, but it has the same material on it. And here we go, at the top of the car, it's always said this, have eligibility, if you answer no, to either question, you cannot register to vote. First question, are you a citizen of the United States? And the second is, will you be 18? Well, what's your name, right? So, person's filling it out, they go, oh, no, I'm not a citizen. So they check no, okay? Or a legal or person, non-citizen, whoever they are, did not do anything wrong. They check no, and then they hand it back to the clerk. Clerk takes it, hands it to the county clerk who does register voter registration. County clerk registers them to vote. So, so you can see there's a number of different layers here where maybe the person that's at the Medicaid office is doing their job and says, oh, excuse me, um, here's a form, and this is your opportunity. If you would like to register to vote, here is how you would do it. But, you know, you have to make sure that you meet these criteria, put those out, and give it to them. Then it's on the person to say, oh, um, I'm a citizen or I'm not a citizen, and here's the other thing. If the person is not speaking English, <laughs> they may be even more to say you can't register to vote. Red flag should be going up, but apparently it's not entirely. So I think this is one of those opportunities when you're talking about local issues committee or whatever these people do, uh, who all y'all are in this committee. Who's not local issues? Who's at these offices seeing how this stuff goes on? I mean, we have no idea, right? So we need to have our eyes and ears more out there so that we can actually take such action. And perhaps it's as easy as, you know, uh, thank you for your public service. Here's some things we found. Have an interview these people. Have you found a situation? How have you been trained? Is there a way we can help solve this? You know, those type of sit-down interviews work really well to get awareness. Like an opportunity to educate without, like, you know, thou shalt not register for a vote, you know. Um, and so I think that's another possible way people are, you know, they're coming in and either they can't read English and can't see that the form says not to do this. So they definitely need some assistance in making sure they should need to be filling this form out. Well, granted, they could fill all the form out if they want, as long as they're telling the truth. And if you check no, well, then. Right? The system should work again. And apparently now we have people who aren't, okay? Why aren't they? Okay, so here's another law. Let's see, which one is this? This is 116045. This one says, upon receipt of the form prescribed by the State Board of Elections, which we just were looking at, that form, 
<clears throat> upon it being uh, properly filled out, all over here, properly filled out and signed by the applicant, the county clerk shall register the applicant. Okay, now come on. We're not all in precinct. <laughs> you all just saw what the court had, right? It said check yes or no, and if you're not, then you're not eligible. The law here says if it's properly filled out and signed, the county clerk shall register the applicant. So I don't know what's going on exactly, but I can tell you a story I had. I got married in 2015. And, but I did not change my name right away because I was going to take some international trips at my passport, my main name, and I didn't want to, you know, tangle everything up. So it was a delay to actually change everything over. So I had this kind of weird situation in names. So when I went to go change my name on my driver's license, now, <laughs> other people think, remember, I'm pretty aware politically. So I actually changed my name on my voter registration. A different time and I change it on my driver's license. <laughs> my registrations are free and I'm tight and driver's yeah. licenses cost to change your name. So uh, I was like, I had this whole thing all lined up, you know, passport, don't pay an extra fee and all this. So I did not want them changing my voter registration at the same time I need to change my license. So I go to the drive back again when we had driver's licenses available to us in our counties. Um, I go into the office and I say, I need to change my name. And uh, they said, okay, well, would you like to register a vote? I said, well, no, I have already registered a vote. And they said, oh, well, it doesn't show in our system that you are. I said, well, I can guarantee you I am. Well, you have to register a vote because you think you are and you're not. And we go round and round, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to throw this out there. We have like two Democrats left in Anderson County. This is one of them. <laughs> so we go round and round. I cannot get this lady to say, okay, I'll let you walk out the door and, or, or take your photo for the driver's license. I mean, we were hung totally up. We could not move forward until I would let her register me a second time. And I was like, no, I think that's fraudulent, and I'm not registering to vote a second time. People have done that, not to be one of So, anyway, I said, well, tell you what, here we go. Since this lady can't be reasoned with, I said, do you, you use the same form as the county clerk? Yes. So I said, okay, well, hand me the form. Okay, I'll take that form, then I can fill it out and change what I want. Okay, so... I thought that was going to solve it. That is not solve it. She goes to her printer and prints the form. Okay, it has the same questions on it. It's not that one form when you're going to do your boots that you pick up at your office. It's just like a fake form that looks a little different. Okay. And it has pre checked in, you know, it says printed your name, all these questions we just did. It has a pre check, has pre filled out my name and pre checked new registrations. Okay, so ordinarily, right, you want to do uh, reason, right? New registration, address change, part change, name change. Okay, so ultimately I was going to need a name change. Uh, but new registration and pre check. So I said, this part is junk. We can't use this. I'm already registered. But anyway, I finally got out of there. And I, so I asked, I said, so what do you do with these cards? If I did a new registration, like, what's the process? So she said, well, um, we just gather up all these cards after so long a time, I don't know, it's weekly or whatever. We just take them and drop them off to the clerk county, right? And then they, they put them in. I said, okay, great. So you should... What's the system you're looking at that tells you I'm not registered then? Because if you're tied in, I say, you tied in computers with the same, oh yeah. And as it turns out, they clearly don't have a system that's the same thing. I go to the county clerk's office another time shortly after this. And I said, here's an issue. So this is what they did, this is what they said. And she's like, oh, the circuit clerk's office is so terrible. 
they are always giving us all this wrong stuff and we have to sort through it all. It's a nightmare. This is why you need your election integrity committee and your local issues committee and whatever other committees you have. Because uh, how would we know this was the problem in my county unless I ran into it that way, right? How would we know this is a problem? Do we know it's a problem in Boone County? I mean, I don't know, but you guys live here. So this is the kind of stuff we have to get to the bottom of. That, and that should be the absolute basis, right? Why are we on two sheets of music? They shall register the applicant. So is your clerk actually checking this stuff? Or is or is somebody on autopilot on the register? Register, you know? I mean, you don't know, do you? Does anybody know the answer to that question? Go down. Okay, see, local committee and election. <laughs> so, okay, so, so that is kind of stage one. Now, let's not forget. I don't want you all to think that everybody follows the rules because they don't. We just talked about that. So, we talked about illegals going in and getting cars and presenting themselves as non citizens. Okay, then you also have the illegals who go in and have all their fake documents and present as citizens. So now, if you're presenting as a citizen, of course you can register your vote, because you're lying the whole way through. So, if you want to know how illegals are, are voting, well, a couple of ways, right? Because they shouldn't be, they don't know it, or they shouldn't be, and they know it, right? Either one. Or, think about it, does an illegal really know the rules about voting? They may be Checking boxes and signing stuff. They have no idea what they're signing and checking boxes for. And then someone picks them up and says, you, you can go vote and they just take them, right? So, you know, you have everything from the totally innocent and doing wrong stuff to totally corrupt and doing wrong stuff. And the whole spectrum is represented in all of these things. So, as far as how we solve this, um, I mentioned before um, this law here where it says they shall register the applicant. Um, I this is not in my current bill uh, that I did last year, but this is something that you guys might want to consider. There's not much detail in the law you could see about what we're going to do to check on people's, for example, citizenship status. Uh, there's federal laws about checking citizenship status, but it's not like a mandatory thing in the sense that everybody's trained on it and knows what it is. It's kind of like out there in the corner somewhere. And if you happen to be an election integrity nerd attorney, then you might have read it and then gone, you know, gangbusters and told everybody to be included. Uh, first of all, ID cards, if they do get a driver's license, yeah, it doesn't include the ones who present fake IDs and get a driver's license. Which, by the way, I've also heard from the lady that did the mission work. Uh, she's been in the social media office and said, well, my eyes, I saw the biggest ID card I've ever seen in my life. So security is close. Their eyes took it and came back to social security. You know, so you're talking about, I mean, culpability on all levels. But if we can get to know those people, sit down with those people, right, all these different points of entry, social security office, Medicaid office, you know, SNAP office, all these places, Voter Registration Purge Program is Paris 116-112. This is actually where I was focusing last year's bill on. Oh, I realized I jumped ahead. Next year's bill is their ID cards will look different if they're not citizens. So on plants, just like when you're 21, you know, it goes the other way. Uh, so on plants, you can tell if somebody's not citizen. Uh, working on that, and then as well, trying to build in a little bit of the back end steps of action, like the clerk gets one and it says no, then what do we do? It says yes, then what do we do? The database is flagging and, and where they're alerted not to make sure they're not registered, but, you know, that would be great too. Uh, but on some level, it needs to be stopped. So, re voter registration purchase program, I'm going to just throw this out there as an extra. So the county is so uh, forward working on their board elections and, and all of this stuff. So this is a little off topic, but it's still on top of voter registration. I wanted to show you uh, your power because most people don't know this. We all have heard about all the inactive voters, all the dead voters, and, and we've got my dad that takes cleaned off 200,000 or whatever expert. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you can get rid of like a million of them. So 
virtually there. And every time we turn around, more people get in and it's get taken off. Okay, so we need to purge voters. We all know that. And we have a really bad problem because of the federal law requiring the state to be control over all of this, that our local clerks have lost a lot of power. And unfortunately, it's the same as everything else. Would you rather have a maid do your house service for you, or would you rather mm -hmm. have to do it yourself? And it's like, um, I'll take the maid. So county clerks also are saying, why would I want to have power if I could get rid of it and not be responsible and not have this much stuff I have to do? Because we all are trying to come up with things, right? So the state board of elections has to be in charge of voter registration from the federal standpoint. State Board of Elections is authorized at trade agreements with other government agencies. Now, they can check the Postal Service National Chain of Press. They can, they, the State Board can do all kinds of different things to check on people actively, proactively. Hey, is that happening? I mean, we pretty much, since we're still trying to catch dead people from 10 years ago, I'm pretty sure it's not actively happening. Okay, here's the key. If the County Board of Elections requests authorization from the State Board of Elections to send address confirmation notices as provided in the subsection, the State Board of Elections shall grant the request. So if we're a little upset about the State Board sitting on their tails and sitting on their hands and sitting on their heels and sitting on everything, not getting things done, it appears from state law that the county can request to be one of those delegated agencies to actually do it for them. This is a this is a place where local action is the key because you guys have the power to work your local board to actually get some of these things moving perhaps in a more expeditious way. State board does not have discretion to choose how it proceeds from there. Law says right here, state board elections shall grant the request. So it's just a matter of Boone County saying, okay, we're going to do this now. So this is a really interesting section, and this is a section that uh, Senate Bill 1 of 8 was about this year. It was really focused on getting the counties back in control of all of this voter registration stuff, because there's no way, a scale of four and a half million people, that you can really keep up with the regularity that you need to. To, you know, I just list it all. Staff office, go to driver's license office, some security office, all of these offices that you all are going, we need more volunteers on our committees. Do you have a slight guess how easily the state board likes to keep up with all that movie turns all over the state? I mean, we all know now, they're all right. So getting it at a local level, that's a more bite sized piece. You can actually get your eyes on and have control of the scale. Uh, seems to be where state was founded, seems to be the way the state may uh, flourish, at least in this area. And so I highly recommend working with your local board to figure out ways that they can kind of take some of those items that have been taken away uh, where possible. It's going to take you. Uh, my motto for this year is self-governance is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Because we all want self-government, but then we're all too busy to deal with it. And so we really have to decide where are we going to set it. And uh, I, I'm speaking to myself, too, because you know, I'm a person. I don't have time for anything, but half the time, right? My sister was just texting me. The doctor says uh, my bones aren't feeling for my broken ankle. She's like, you've got to get outside and get deep <laughs> Instead of sitting in front of a computer all day. Oh, so I'm speaking to myself, too. Some governments is a lot of work, but I think just like the founders, the founders just went all in. Time, talent, treasure, life, fortune, state honor. And we're not going to have the breed if we don't do it. And it's going to take everything we have, all of us. And so we just have to, we just have to. So let's just say hypothetically our county clerk sent out address confirmation notices. What's the subsequent action that follows that? Yeah, so it, that is already set forward in federal law and uh, state law kind of follows along. So if you have reason to believe something on up there, for example, the address list, the post office knows the forward and their stuff. We can't just 
to award their voter registrations. You, know, you need to verify that. So it would constitute getting the notice, getting you know a hold of them or something to confirm that yes, in fact, this is their new address. And then once you have that confirmation, for example, like there's a signed card, they can sign a paper that says that, or uh, they can, uh, there's an online portal now that they can submit. So as long as you can get them to confirm that, yes, that's me and I want to be changed, then you can change them. So there's no outline exactly what that confirmation is supposed to look like? I mean, there is. There is a card. Uh, so there's some there's some requirements of the card. The state board currently has a card design that they use, but it's not like card four that you can't modify at all. Kind of like the voter registration card. It has requirements that it has to include all these items. Those are set out the law. But, you know, you could technically design your own on your own Photoshop as well as it's not all the criteria. So under 18 U.S.C. 611, Voting in a federal election without being a citizen is against the law. It prevents you actually from becoming a naturalized citizen for a period of time. There's also a presumption of a um, illegal claim to U.S. citizenship that goes along with that, which means that all of those people who are getting registered, it may not impact them now. But five years down the road, when they try to naturalize and actually become citizens, it could be a permanent bar to them. What is being done to educate the people that are doing this disservice? Because I see these naturalization petitions get slammed down on this very ground uh, on a regular basis. They go back and they look at these worlds. Then they, the island, <clears throat> the alien, has to go back and try to subpoena the records to show that they didn't check the citizenship box. And a lot of times, it's not there. They can't find the record. And so they're stuck. They can never not. That's an incredible uh, example. I, that's, that's awesome. Um, I think that the key, as I mentioned earlier, we have all these truckers that are kind of just like, like a better way to say it. They eat like rain. Who's their supervisor? Who's the organizer for the nation? And they need to hear that kind of thing. And I think that it, we can sit here and say we wish the government was better, but at the same time, well, they're already not. So what are we going to do about it? Right? So I think that we have to literally take that story, that information, and personally deliver that piece of information to every person that does this work. I mean, it's like not faster. Well, if we can make employers put up um, minimum wage signs and harassment signs, why can't we make that SNAP and Medicaid and voter registration have posters in English, Spanish, and Arabic saying, if you do this, you're not going to become a citizen ever? I think that's awesome. Um, actually, I'm going to also throw in another thing was plug for another bill that I already have done this past year new development again. I did a lot of new development this year that I did not plan to do. But it will be coming back next year as well. Um, employers, all the signs you just listed. Did you know in the Constitution you have the right to forward it four hours off every election day to vote? And your employer is required to let you off. And a lot of employees, their excuse is, well, I can't get off work. Okay, yes, you can't. You better, right? If your employer's not alerting you on this, and our law is not like solid, solid on the requirement to notify of the right. And so I actually have that where you have to have the poster. And if you're denied, here's the number to call. <laughs> so I love, I think that's maybe the way people at least still start with it in their head. Like that's more of a reason to make sure that we have all the policing. So to move to the I was going to say, you don't need a four minute limit when you have small precincts. <laughs> So I think you're definitely looking at, you know, the tax blue group and whatnot. I mean, it's, the name changes every three months, but whoever's registering people, they're for sure actively pushing this stuff. I don't know. I don't have any specific stories or examples of are they going to places where illegals specifically are and shoving forms in their face, or are they snookering them into it and the illegals don't even really know? And it's this happening like in greater proportions for same day registration states versus 
ones like us that have the maximum possible 30 day notice. Uh, so I don't, I don't actually know the answer to that question, but I know for a fact that all the blue groups are heavy to be into both illegals and making sure every one their mother and their dogs all voting. Okay, last question from the chair lady. Um, so we were informed that the new law that would cause registered voters to have to actually send in a written form saying that they have moved out of state or they have just moved before they can be re removed from their voter rolls. That is something we fought like mad last season, um, last session. So, um, and it went through anyway. How on earth are we supposed to get our clerks to move on this if we can't even remove them unless they've sent in written confirmation? Um, well, the issue, of course, <clears throat> is issuing the notices to get them. And so right now it's very passive. It's let's go through a mailing list of paint and dead people and send them notices. And when they don't show up, we'll wait for two years and see if they come back, you know, as far as mail, and then we'll get another year, of, you know, like all of that. Whereas, you know, uh, what if you said, okay, this person looks like they live here. We've got our election integrity committee out and they're going to go visit and see if they can drum this person up and hand them the form right here. Okay. And then we take it to the clerk or, or elections members, right? I mean, just think about how much more proactive you could get on finding people than the standard fare that is going on. So I think that's the key to pushing forward from the local board perspective, uh, actually putting some personnel and time onto it rather than just letting it sit down the river and nobody. Well, and then they're going to come back with, well, we already don't have enough staff for the work we, workload we do have. This is what we're up against. I mean, and to boot, we are a big, I mean, we have a hundred and supposedly we have 105,000 actual um, eligible voters, or people who could vote over 18. That's a lot of people and that's a lot to check. And we're also very transient. So to ask volunteers to do that kind of work and then also going to the clerks to ask them to increase the workload. I'm all for it. Um, you know that, but I'm just trying to figure out how do we help our clerks understand that there is a way forward. So I think the key, I just heard you talking about clerk staff and volunteers. So one, don't use all your volunteer staff to do the clerk's job if they don't want to do it. So you don't have the authority to do it. So we got to be smart about how we do all of our you know, what's what here. Uh, so first, you got to clerk on the board to understanding the issue and that we can do this. Second, uh, the clerk's office is typically funded by fees and they collect by a variety of different measures. And the elections is getting to be really weird because if you're aware, last year during the session, they were trying to increase funding to and helping these counties that are getting rid of precincts and everything to still be able to increase funding regardless. This normally used to be funded for precinct and you know, it hasn't changed in 30 years. We all know there's inflation. I get that. But um, and they're also spending tons of money on all of these old boats and getting all the grants and these new machines and all this extremely high cost stuff. Yes. And I'm not investing in the staff to actually make sure this stuff works. So, you know, there again, it's a priority issue. And then, triple support. <laughs> support people. Um, you know, this is a question of priority for the community. Do we want to make sure that the clerk's office is, is doing what they're supposed to do, or do we want to let the post office decide they're going to buy fancy gear and not do the main cool tasks and personal things, you know? So I would, I personally would, you know, not be approving gear that is well documented nationwide at total huge leaks and bulks. Yes. And that stuff's in the multi-millions per county this size. And so I think you can maybe hire a person to focus on voter registration, just saying. And in fact, we already do. I don't know how many people work with voter registration here, but in my county, I'm a much smaller county of 20,000, and we have somebody that's like dedicated voter registration person. That's like what they do. So, you know, elections aren't going on while you're around, and you can't first voters off the day for an election anyway, because that could, you know, there's laws against freaking people out, scaring them, and, and, and 
making it a surprise for the voting and what's going on. So it's really you're thinking about the people that normally do elections during election prep season and the off season are focused on these uh, purging systems because voter registration is kind of it's not always even, but let's say it's even. Purging is not even, so it can only be done certain times of year. Use your brain and do your research.